99% of Americans, and most Western countries for that matter, fail to understand China. But why is that? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you two main reasons why I believe many Western countries around the world fail to understand China. But I have to warn you, today's video is going to be very different than my typical video. And instead of presenting today's video from the eyes of an American expat, someone who has spent a significant portion of his life reading, studying Chinese language, culture, and business, I'm going to present things in an entire different way. From the eyes of an American who knows absolutely nothing about the country of China. Today's video is also sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Stick around to the end to hear a special offer. Now, as we get started in today's video, I'm going to share with you an interesting story to give you all a better perspective of the mindset of a typical American. Now, I first moved to China in January 2007, and it wasn't until almost two years later that I had the opportunity to return home back to my home state of Florida. After a nearly two-year hiatus, I was very eager to return home because I wanted to share some of the amazing stories and experience that I had during my first two years in China. First of all, I was living in the sprawling metropolis of Shanghai, arguably China's best city. I had the chance to travel to Beijing to complete a 15-kilometer hike along the Great Wall of China. I had made multiple business trips down to the Chinese cities of Hong Kong and Macau, and I had even completed two holidays in Asia, the first going to the beautiful beaches in Thailand, and the second going to the vibrant capital city of Seoul, South Korea. For this small town American boy, I had some amazing world experiences, and I was so eager to share these with my closest friends and family. Now, I made arrangements to meet up with several of my old high school classmates, and we met up at a local restaurant. And as we sat down in the restaurant, and I began to tell everybody about my story, something very interesting happened. After about 30 seconds, I started looking at all my friends' faces, and I noticed that they really weren't paying attention to what I was saying. After about a minute of me speaking, pretty much everybody had given up on my story. They started grabbing their cell phones, they grabbed the menu, even some of my friends started their own new conversations. The interesting thing was is that although I had these amazing experiences in China, no one was interested in this. And this is the first thing that we must consider is that China to the average American means absolutely nothing. America is one of the most diverse countries in the world. Imagine you wanted to go on a holiday and experience amazing beaches, or maybe you prefer mountain hikes, desert landscapes, scenic forest, whatever experience you want to have in this world, you can find it in America. But this is a double-edged sword for American citizens. Although it's wonderful that America is truly one of the most beautiful and diverse countries in the world, Unfortunately, the vast majority of Americans never have an interest in traveling outside of America. And this is why the vast majority of Americans, well over 70%, do not have a passport, have never traveled outside, have no interest in foreign languages or foreign cultures. For the average American, no other country in the world matters. And this is why there are still so many outdated stereotypes about China in American minds today. 50 years ago, when the United States and China established diplomatic relations, the United States was in a very high position of power. It no doubt was the number one country in the world, and China trailed significantly. Now, the Chinese were acutely aware of their disadvantage, and they went out of their way to educate themselves about America, trying to close this gap. And this is exactly what we've seen happen over the last 50 years. Now, there's a theory in the West that exists that the Chinese government wants to restrict its citizens from learning about the outside world. Many people will say, Cyrus, the reason that the Chinese government have installed the Great Firewall and that they actively censor the internet is because the Chinese government is scared its citizens will know about the outside world. But if this was actually true, why is it that Chinese students are required to take 12 years of English in school? Why is it possible for Chinese nationals to get 10-year, multiple-entry visas to countries like the United States? Why is a Chinese national allowed to purchase foreign real estate, send their children abroad, immigrate to other countries? Why have the Chinese become the number one source of tourism in the world, accounting for over 150 million trips abroad in the year 2019 alone? Now, given the facts that I presented here, there's one truth that we need to establish in this discussion. The average Chinese person knows significantly more about America and Western culture than the average American knows about China and Chinese culture. 
Walk around any Chinese city today and you will see a plethora of American brands and culture everywhere. Chinese youth are wearing Nike sneakers, drinking Starbucks lattes, eating McDonald's Big Macs, and listening to music on their Apple iPhones. Like this Times article from October 2020 states, who needs democracy? China's 400 million millennials prefer iPhones. Do you want to know what America's number one export is? American culture. Take a look at this video that I filmed on my last visit to China in September 2019. And I want you to pay close attention to the backpack that the child is wearing and what this mother says to her son. Yes. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. All right. This guy's got his English dialed in. Now this clip was filmed in a local Shanghai school. And again, let's take a look at that backpack to see what this child was wearing. Good old Captain America, one of the most popular superheroes in American culture today. The new generation of Chinese have spent a significant time studying Western culture and language, and this is a point that we cannot overlook. Now, the second reason that Americans and Westerners around the world fail to understand China is the fact that their only insight into the country of China is Western media. And let's just be honest here. If your only insights into the country are CNN, Fox News, and the BBC, you no doubt are not getting the full truth on the country of China. To put this in perspective, let's look at how the BBC has treated the royal family over the years. If the British Broadcasting Corporation is willing to treat the royal family this bad, you can imagine what they're going to do with a country like China. Most definitely, they are not going to be fair and objective in their reporting. The 2020 census in China just debuted a few months ago, and there are currently over 845,000 foreign nationals choosing to live inside the country of China today. Of that 845, 25,000 foreign nationals have received permanent residence and are choosing to permanently reside inside the country of China. Now, as a former China expat myself of over 10 years, many of us are frustrated with the way that China is often presented in Western media. And just to recap, the main message that Western media has been preaching over the past 18 months, let's take a look at this tweet. Chinese government, company, products, apps, vaccine, influence, students, scientists, athletes, women, rocket, Chinese, all of it is bad, but the Chinese people are good. Now, after seemingly blaming every single problem the United States has on the country of China, US politicians and broadcasters always try to save face by simply saying, we actually love the Chinese people, we just don't like the Chinese government. In this article entitled New High in Perceptions of China as the United States Greatest Enemy, let's take a look at how Western media has influenced the minds of typical Americans. In February 2020, 23% of Americans felt that Russia was the greatest enemy of the United States of America. But fast forward just 12 months, in February 2021, there is an overwhelming 45% of Americans now feel that China is America's greatest enemy. This is a 100% increase in percentage points in just 12 months. And there's a very clear explanation why this happened. This is the exact message that Western media has been preaching to the United States citizens and other Westerners around the world. As the economy in China continues to progress and the timetable of when China will leapfrog the United States in becoming the world's leading country becomes smaller and smaller, there's only one thing left for the United States to do. This is Joe Biden in an article that was published in March 2021 when he pledges to prevent China from becoming the world's leading country. Now, is this the first time we've seen the United States media act like this? Not exactly. Take a look at these Time Magazine covers from the 1980s when Japan was perceived to be the number one threat to the United States hegemony. How Japan does it, the world's toughest competitor. Japan returns to nationalism. How to cope with Japan's business invasion. Trade wars. The United States gets tough with Japan. Now, fast forward 40 years, and you can basically replace Japan with China, and these Time Magazine issues would be completely relevant to today's time. Again, this is the message that the United States government and the United States media is preaching. China is the greatest threat to the United States. But actually, I don't believe that to be true. I believe that the United States and China can still have a pathway to learning to work together. And again, 
This is the basis of this channel, and this is why I spend my time here on YouTube trying to advocate a better relationship between these two countries. Now, looking back on the history of the United States and China, the United States government and politicians have made some colossal mistakes and very big misunderstandings regarding the country of China. Now, I first highlighted some of these mistakes in an earlier YouTube video entitled, Has China Changed? You can click the link above to watch that video. Unfortunately, not understanding China has become so commonplace in America that it is actually one of the most popular American metaphors. The phrase, am I speaking Chinese, is a metaphor people use when they don't think the other person understands something one has said or explained. Now, as we come to the conclusion of this video, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. You can choose to love China or hate China, but there is one truth that needs to be established. The future of our world and the future of our global economy will heavily rely on the country of China. And I truly believe that it is in everybody's best interest, regardless of your nationality, to take time and learn more about the country of China. And again, it's really important that the United States, as one of the leading superpowers in the world, learns to deal with China objectively and learns to foster a better relationship. I've mentioned this on this channel before, when we're looking at some of the greatest challenges our planet faces, things like climate change, there is no way that this will not be solved unless the United States and China can learn to resolve their differences, focus on their similarities, and come together for the common good of this planet. For the past few decades, the Chinese have been aware of their disadvantage. They have worked tremendously hard. They have studied significantly about American and other Western cultures. They have learned English, and they are continuing to improve themselves every single day. And this is something that Western countries and Westerners can learn from the Chinese. Let's take some time and try to understand things from the Chinese perspective and try to be better global citizens. Everybody, thank you for watching today's video, and I want to give a huge thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring today's video. Vaccines are rolling out across the world, and soon all of us will be able to resume international travel. I know for a fact that I will soon be going back to the country of China, and I honestly can't wait. And one of the first things that I'm going to be packing is, of course, a VPN, a virtual private network, to help me keep my data secure as I'm on the road. Now, many of you who follow this channel know that Surfshark VPN has gotten behind me and this channel, and they are sponsoring today's video and also offering you an amazing discount. Use my promo code Cyrus at checkout and you will receive 83% off the retail value. Now, working with Surfshark VPN is flawless because they're going to give you a 30-day money-back guarantee. In addition, if you use my referral code of Cyrus, you're going to receive an additional three months of service for free. This is an offer that cannot be beat. So if you're in the market for a VPN, please give Surfshark VPN a try. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And again, thank you for watching this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.